Howdy y'all, Fuzzy Biker. We are on the Hot Rod Himalayan today and it's quite a big day for this hot rod. I just flipped over 21,000 miles. By the way, we're out here at uh, Murray Hill Scenic Overlook. But anyway, let me show you this here real quick. I'm pretty proud of this. These are my Royal Enfield gloves and I'm pretty proud of those too. But uh, let's turn that hot rod on. Mileage, 21,000. Two <laughs> point eight. How about that, huh? Anyway, I just put this new back tire on about 1,200 miles ago. Anyway, I thought I'd give you guys a rundown on the uh, handful of problems that I've had with this bike over the last two years since I got her. And uh, I'm going to start with the with the simplest problems that I've had and uh, kind of work my way, you know, to the most complex ones. And then at the end, I'm going to give you a little uh, info on uh, what I expect to have, you know, what are the things I expect to come up in uh, owning this motorcycle, what are the kind of problems I expect to have. And I might talk a little bit about, uh, I want to talk a little bit about riding a motorcycle if I think of it. So uh, the first thing I want to talk about, since we've got the key on already, is the compass. When I got this bike, this bike has a compass right here. And uh, all of us lucky Royal Enfield owners that have these kind of bikes, we know that that compass just doesn't work. And in the beginning, it worked a little bit, and you know, you have to reset it, and everybody tells you, oh, do this, do that. There's all kinds of magic stuff you're supposed to do, and it works, and it goes back to the problem. One of the problems I think I have is that where I park my motorcycle, the 200 amp service for my house is about five feet away from the bike. And I don't know if that affects my bike or not. Uh, what I do know is that if you've owned a Royal, if you've owned a Royal Enfield for very long, your compass does not work. So <laughs> uh, the next thing I got on my list, I got a neat little list right here, is the seat. This is not the stock seat. I've had, uh, this is the third seat I've had on this. I had the stock seat by about 8,000 miles. I was just sick of it. I'd wore it down to just a, it was just a soft piece of foam. So I bought what they call the touring seat. And uh, it was about the same shape, but it was a little harder rubber, about the same shape as, shape, about the, same shape as the original seat. And uh, it did okay. It was a little firmer, a little more comfortable, but it still had the same problem. One of the problems it had was the shape of the seat kind of has a cutout in it. And I've seen that work, you know, kind of saddle shape. I've seen that work on other motorcycles, but it just did not work for me on this bike. I bought this seat. This is a seat concept seat right there. I ordered it tall, so it's an inch and a half taller than the normal seat. And I also ordered, it's also wider, by the way. I also ordered it with uh, hard rubber, you know, firm rubber, firm cushion. So. And I've had a really, I, I like that seat a lot. So I've had it, what, 5,000 miles now? And it uh, it just, I, I, it works really good for me. Next thing I got on here is front end rattles. And this is one I continue to have. Uh, the front end of this bike, I've had all kinds of things, you know, come loose and rattle and a little light in there that breaks. And uh, it's actually broken right now. I, I, I've had all kinds of things. I had uh, The last time I had this part, this had actually come loose at the top. I've had to put this rubber on here to help for that. It's just part of the ownership of the bike. And like I said in my last video, one thing i got to admit to is that I, I ride this bike pretty hard sometimes in some pretty rut, ruddy, ruddy, rough roads. And, you know, this goes up and down quite a bit. So another thing I did, the windscreen that came on this bike was small. And for me, that would just did not work. I ride a lot of motorcycle. Like, it's, you know, two years old, this bike's got 21,000 miles. Of course, I've got a couple other motorcycles. But, uh... I wanted, I went on a long trip and I wanted to, I came out of that wanting a big windshield and I found this is the biggest windshield I could find. I found this uh, Cal Fort, Cal Sci, I think it's called. I got this at Baxter Cycle, BaxterCycle.com. Actually, I got everything, all the add-ons I got at Baxter Cycle, I would say. I have really enjoyed it. Um, it didn't quite work right when I got it. The mounting points that came with the motorcycle weren't firm enough, so I had to rebuild those. And then there was something in here. I th oh, these are called well nuts. And the well nuts on the top held, but the bottom one's pulled out. So I had to put, uh, I don't know if you can see that on this side. I had to put washers back there. I put uh, fender washers and lock nuts back there. And I did the same thing down here for this to hold it. But, you know, it's firm enough and it works pretty good. And I really do like that. That's one of the great things I added to this motorcycle, I believe. Right. Next thing on the list was, and this just happened, the squeaky swing arm thing and uh, I fixed the headlight and got rid of all that noise you know the the rattly stuff up there well I got about 15 miles away from Baxter cycle and I noticed a squeak down here so I went back in showed it to them they isolated said oh we know just what that is and uh, all of a sudden they tore that whole thing apart there's a bolt in there just I don't want to pull it apart but there's a it's, it's humongous I mean it's just super thick and what it is is the swing arm pivot point 
know, the swing arm attaches to it. That's how the swing arm attaches to the frame. And they pull that out and there's, I don't know if there's bearings or bushings or some sort of stuff in there, but they, they took care of that. Regreased it, do, you know, whatever they do, whatever they did. They had it all done in about 20 minutes. I really appreciate that. And they were, you know, right on it. And that happened so that, you know, the bike had just about 20,000 miles on it when that happened. And I ride a lot of dirt. So 20,000 miles, I'll bet you 40% of that's on uh, dirt and gravel. So another thing that happened to me, next thing on this nifty list, that was, a, uh, it happened a couple times, was the venting system for the tank plugged up. And uh, they, I went, took it in the Baxters, they fixed it. And when it, when that happened, how I knew it happened was when I'd open the tank, the, the lid would just explode open, just pop, you know, and it happened. And uh, the second time it happened, the gas was, the bike was spewing gas on the pavement, you know, sitting in the sun and uh, they fixed that. Well, after that, came out to my garage one day and there's a little bit of gas on the ground. Took the seat off, looked around and there was a little tiny leak in the tank. So I, you know, I went to Baxter Cycle. <laughs> they ordered me a new tank on the spot. Uh, a week later, they had it put back on. We put the new stickers back on it. You know, I had the old old tank had stickers. If you want to see the old tank, it's over at Baxter Cycle in the Royal Enfield section of the building. <laughs> anyway, that, uh, that was kind of a bit of an issue for a minute. And that was one that, uh, well, anyway, enough about that. So the big one, the second to the biggest one, I would say, and the one that I'm sure everybody has heard about, this is a 2001 model, and my understanding is it was worse than this model, is the stalling issue. So these bikes would, you'd, you'd come to a stop, pull in the clutch, come to a stop, and the bike would just die. You'd have to hit the start button and start right back up. And that went on for a while, and I, I love the bike so much, I did not take it into Baxter's to get it fixed. I put up with it actually. And uh, I think the first uh, month I had this motorcycle, I put something like 5,000 miles on it. So anyway, finally I, I, I took it in. I called Baxter's up and said, hey, I got the problem. They, I didn't actually, actually I drove up there and I showed it to them and they pushed the bike in the back half an hour later, 90% of that problem was gone. And they said, if it comes back, bring it back. So I waited another couple of weeks. I did have just a little bit of it left, a very, very small amount. Went back and, uh, they did something. They took the seat off, hooked things up, hooked up machines, did all kinds of neat stuff. And I, I know you guys are going to ask me what they did. I'm just going to tell you right now, I really don't know what they did. As far as I know, it's some sort of a magic spell they put on it or some sort of voodoo or something like that. But what I do know is it doesn't stall anymore and it works really good. Now, here's the biggest problem I've had with this motorcycle. The last thing I'm going to tell you about problems anyway. And, uh, or about current problems or problems I've had. And I don't know what to do about this one. I just don't know if there's any hope for this one, actually. And that is, this motorcycle is perpetually dirty. I take it to the car wash, the next day it's filthy. Sometimes even an hour or two later it's filthy. It's dusty, it's uh, cruddy, it's always got, you know, just, just look at that. I mean, look at that rim. And, uh, you know, I, I'm supposing that has something to do with the amount of uh, gravel I run. <laughs> I'm being, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, Levity, it's levity, right? Making a joke, ha ha ha. But uh, no, that's, I, this bike is always filthy and uh, I clean it and they, it's just, you know, it's a gravel bike, what do you do, right? Life is, uh, life of a gravel bike, right? So uh, what about problems I expect to have in the near future? Uh, according to Royal Enfield, I should continuously check my head bearings. That's part of the maintenance thing. And I do that frequently, and I haven't had that problem yet. I've heard of other people having problems with it. I've never seen a motorcycle. I've seen a lot of Himalayans, but I've never seen one with a problem. So, you know, we'll just keep an eye on that. The other one I've, I've heard people talk about are wheel bearings. And again, I check that constantly every time I have it on the center stand. Not every time, but often. And so far, so good. But, you know, 21,000 miles, um, Something like that's bound to come up pretty quick, I suppose. Next one is brake pads. You know, the brake pads in the front were good. They did the, uh, cal there was a recall on the calipers and they put those on the, the front pads were fine. The back ones were about half gone. So I'm gonna probably replace the back ones pretty soon. Um, I also expect the front end to continue to give me the rattling problem. And I actually know it will because it's already doing so now a little bit. I just don't know. I don't think there's any way to really get rid of it. It's just part of the ownership experience, I guess. And of course, you know, we're going to have to put tires on it and new chain and things like that periodically. Oil and valves and things like that. The, uh, 
the chain I changed to 9,000 and then again at 18,000. So it's worked out pretty well. So the last thing I'd like to kind of talk about is the, uh, I guess it's the art of motorcycle riding or the skills or, you know, something like that. So, uh, and I want to talk about how good this motorcycle is for developing skills and learning to ride and uh, how this dirt bike or bike that I ride on gravel and dirt a lot will increase your uh, skills of riding on pavement. Um, when you learn skills, you learn, you know, the nuts and bolts of it, how it, how they work, you know, when to put on your brakes, things like that. Then you go out and practice them. That's practicing your skills, you know, uh, practical, you know, think you have to think about it. You have to do it right. You, uh, learn the mechanics first. You learn the uh, skills of using it. Then, uh, as time goes on, you kind of learn the art of it. You know, it becomes automatic things. You start to play with it and, uh, motorcycles like this, they're low power. This is a 24 horsepower motorcycle. They, uh, they've got good handling, they've got a lot of uh, flexibility. You really learn to get the most out of riding. You know, you learn really to take the full advantage of the handling and how to get the most power out of the engine, how to use the clutch properly and, or to the best advantage. And that's the kind of thing that a motorcycle like this, you know, develops. Now, I, I've got between half a million and a million miles of motorcycles. This is one of the funnest motorcycles I've ever owned, probably the funnest motorcycle I've ever owned. And that's, I think, one of the reasons is the art of motorcycle riding. It lets you use those to the maximum amount. So getting a motorcycle like this for a beginner lets you develop those skills better. And uh, for an experienced rider, it's the same thing. It lets you use those skills, practice them, you know, develop the art of motorcycle riding to a higher degree. But uh, Hey, life is good. I got 21,000 miles on my hot rod Himalayan. I think I'm gonna put this camera up and I'm gonna go for a hike. Wahoo! More of that yucca right there. You can see the uh, plant life here. Isn't that pretty? We're in September in Iowa. So, I mean, just, you know, things are just starting to turn colors. It's, there's a big old bumblebee. Gorgeous, gorgeous. I'm not sure what this is. If any of you all know, please post. And of course, the yucca again. I don't want to touch this, but uh, little seed, seed pods. 